James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, and Elvis Aaron Presley. What do all these celebrity deaths have in common? Dead celebrities who doesn't want to be famous. Dead celebrities. 16 years ago, evil came to the town of Avondale, leaving a trail of carnage in his wake. Since that night, the small town has tried to forget the nightmare that took place. Tonight, on February 29th, they will remember his name. Now the bloodletting behemoth has returned to finish what he started. The 1988 classic returns on home video. Help! Somebody help! Everything you know, none of it's true. They've been keeping you here, guarding you, getting you ready for tonight. His victims butchered. Jesus! This is you will. This curse on my name. by M.J. Dixon. Deep in the swamps of Louisiana, you're gonna need an exorcism. And better make it snappy. Ghost Alligator.
please. Just, just beat my daughter out of this. All right, girls. Hi, Bance. We still on for date night, yeah, Claudine? Oh, you mean, are we still up for you coming into my work, getting drunk with your mates, and then following me home? Yeah, exactly. Can't wait. Oh, my pal Dave's gonna be at the pub tonight, Emily. He uh, still wants a date with you. How is that any different to any other night? Shut up, Claudine. Dave, go on. Hi, Emily. Hi. Fuck me. The chemistry between you two is unbearable. Shut up. Are you, are you going to the pub tonight? I work there. <laughs> oh, man. You are souls. We still on for later, though, yeah, babe? Cunts. I was getting somewhere as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like something from fucking Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> oink, oink. Hi, Paula. You're both late. You wouldn't pull this shit if Daddy was here. The fucking hell, Emily. What are you wearing? It's not Halloween yet. Sorry. Anyway, I need you to go and change some barrels. What, and you can't do it? I'm just holding the fort while Daddy's in the Canary Islands. And then it's back to LA for me. Oh, yeah. Your movie career. <laughs> Emily, that creepy guy's back again. Can you two stop gossiping and get out here? Oh, fucking lazy cow. Right, Keith, you old tosser. Hey oh. There's no fish today, lads. Oh. Well, I guess we'd better go to the pub early then, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys hadn't ruined things for me and Emily earlier. 
Oh, boo-hoo, you soppy shit. Look, this is your second chance. You know, have another shot with her. Yeah, man, it was only a joke, Dave. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Emily, um, look, I just want to apologise what happened with the guys earlier. Hi, Dave. Hi, I was kind of talking to Emily. I have got this wicked film for us all to watch Halloween night. It's going to freak you all out, right? <laughs> it's actually banned over here. Fucking Mary Whitehouse, right? I had to get Dodgy Dan to import me a copy from South America, where life is cheap. What's it called? The house painter or something stupid like that. It's called The Decorator, actually. Mm. And it's the scariest movie ever made. Any other options? Yeah, I've got um, Run Bastard Run, uh, Frat Party Blender Massacre, um, Sorority Babes and the Vampire, Invasion of the Alien Spiders, Kill Kill Faster Faster, and Campfire Girls. Ooh. I've got tons. Can't wait. Oh, that creep's been in all day again. I swear he never takes his eyes off of Emily. Bans, can you get rid of him? Guys, don't don't worry about it. It's fine. No, Bans. If anyone's going to defend Emily, it's going to be me. Why? <clears throat> Hi. I've been talking to my friends. And you've been kind of making the barmaids feel uncomfortable, so we wondered if you could leave, please. <laughs> Alright, sunshine. You've had enough. Now get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Don't worry, girls. That creep won't bother you anymore. Not with me around. Last orders! I knew this day would come. Night, Ted. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Just tell me. I need to leave in five minutes. I had a dream last night. About Dad. Your dad was a piece of shit liar. Mum! Don't you know, Emily. 
He tried to leave his wife and sold you some fantasy about running away and then just dumped you by the beach. He didn't leave. He was murdered. I saw him get killed. Not this. It's a story you made up. The police checked and your dad's car was never found. There was no blood on the beach. No evidence to suggest either of you were ever there. No such thing has ever happened or would ever happen in Mellow Coast. I'm up on holiday. Bye. Did you hear about that murder on the radio? I reckon it's that old man the guys work with. Yeah, I did. What's wrong, Emily? Did you know him? No, it's not that. It's just... It's bringing back all these memories about my dad being murdered. I thought he just went missing. That's what my mum likes to tell people. But it's not true. I was really young, but I remember bits of that night. We were in his car, and he drove me to this building where he used to work. He told me he'd be back, but he was gone for ages. I got out of the car and started walking along the beach. That's when I saw this man. He was dressed all in black with his weird gas mask on. I hid before he could see me, and when he left, that's when I saw my dad. He was dead. There was so much blood. I was scared, so I ran. I ran straight to the station. And that's... I love Halloween stories. Mine's so much better than that. It's not a story. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, you need some gravitas when telling stories, Emily. So, when I was younger, my friend told me the story of a friend of theirs and an exchange student staying with them. He was into hiking, so he'd regularly walk out of the village into the hills. And this one time, he didn't come back. The next morning, family were worried about him, so they went looking. What they found was shocking. His face had been eaten clean off. Was that supposed to be scary? <laughs> it was shit. My story wasn't shit. Emily's was shit. Mine really happened. That definitely never happened. She's telling the truth, children. I know what happened. I have seen them. They think no one will listen to old nanny, but I know. What is it, sister? What happened? The beasts. The beasts, Colin. They take others too. Oh my God, did you hear that? She lives by my arm. She isn't even a real nun, Emily. Crazy bitch. Far too many weirdos. Hello, Grange Club, Paula speaking. Can I speak to Emily, please? Emily, it's your mum. Just a minute. Mum, are you okay? I'm fine, Emily. I just need you to tell work I won't be in for two weeks. Oh. Okay, Mum. I can't talk now, Emily. Some arsehole wants to use the phone. Mum? Mum? Oh, fuck's sake. Emily? Are you there? Evening, Detective Kincaid.
What can I do for you, Kincaid? I've spent all day with the pathologist. Mm-hmm. Keith, the fisherman, was murdered with a cutthroat razor. He had a big beard, didn't he? Yeah, probably slipped shaving. His body was found on the beach. I, um, uh, homeless, I think. Yeah, anyway, doesn't matter. It's solved. What is? Project 49. The bike theft? That's what all the fuss was about out in the corridor? Well, y yeah. I, I said I'd take the arresting officer out for a pint. So, uh, I, I think we should shut up shop and we'll go and celebrate. We can't shut the station. Sir, surely a murder takes priority. Uh, Mellow Coast is small time. We don't do murder. Anyway, I'll catch you later. Oh. <sighs> As part of our Halloween season, we bring you Sprigged Mid Geister. And I said to him, Walt, we just don't do nudity. <laughs> well, interesting. So, why do you waste your time on that weirdo Emily? What, you've worked in this town six months now? I don't think I've seen you take your eyes off her. Don't call her a weirdo. She's just different. She's different, all right. Well, if you ever want a real woman, you know where I am. Mate, what are you doing? What? I like Emily. Yeah? And you never ask her out, you soppy asshole. I can. Just delicate. Mm. Delicate? Weird, you mean? Huh? We must summon your dead father using this Ouija board. Daddy's just gonna grab something, okay? I'll be five minutes. Right, there's this scene apparently, right, where someone drops something into the paint can. So they reach in to get it, but oh no, the paint can's full of razor blades. And it's cutting their hand and they pull it out and there's all this blood and they're like, ah, blood everywhere. It's amazing. Why are you still talking about this film? Oh, just wait, Bant. I promise you, it's the bloodiest thing you've ever seen. Spirits present, make yourselves known. How do you know my name? Dad, is that you? No. Then who are you? A friend? Then tell me what's going on. This must have belonged to my dad. The creep from the pub. He must have known my dad. Dr. A. Dr. Lloyd. Hey, Emily. Uh, 
You know that creepy guy from the pub? The one Vance chucked out? What's he done now? Nothing. I need to talk to him. I know he hangs around the boatyard sometimes. Uh, I haven't seen him since last night, but he's normally down his lobman plot. Oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> she seems more interested in creepy old drunks than you, mate. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> what are those? Gloves. Leather gloves. Oh, so, so fucking what? Loads of guys wear them. No, Bants. Lots of serial killers <laughs> wear them. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> You shouldn't be here. Now get out of here. You went with my dad, didn't you? You don't know what you're talking about. Now get out of here before something bad happens. D Dr. Lloyd, who is he in all this? Lloyd is long dead. Now leave. Did you kill them? I didn't kill anybody. Now get out of here, Emily. Your father wouldn't want you mixed up in this. What is going on? I'll tell you one last time, Emily. You're getting involved in things you don't understand. Leave now! <laughs> A beauty of a boat. Emily? He, he had a knife. He knew my dad. Who had a knife? The, the creepy guy from the pub. Where's he now? We were in his shed. I, I don't know where he is now. What are you doing with that old creep? He knows something. He knew my dad. It's a small town. Everyone knows everyone around here. Don't know what you think this guy knows. But he's a crazy drunk man that lives at the allotment. You need to stay away from him, okay? Okay. Do you want me to walk you home? I'll be fine. You sure? Yeah. You know where I am if you need me. Okay. inject freebie with steroids. Didn't react well to being injected before. Hopefully, with the special measures in place, we should be able to control the reaction better.
Do you know the Keith murder from the other night? Well, I've been up all night investigating, and he worked for Dexter Corp when he was a young lad as their cleaner. Then suddenly it hit me. So when I first started here 10 years ago, we had this little girl come running into the station. She was screaming that her father, a local scientist at Dexter Corp called Tim Trescott, had been murdered. We searched for him for days, but never found any trace of him. Well, what I didn't know was, before I started, another scientist went missing. This one turned up dead, and Keith was a suspect in his murder. I don't know. It might just be a coincidence. But there's definitely some connections here, don't you think? Detective Milky? Huh? Sorry, I'm on a break. But you just got here. And I literally don't give a shit. I guess I'll just go make another coffee. That's phase two, sugars. Look, you've got nothing to do tonight. Your shift's about to finish. You can either go home and sit by yourself in an empty house because your neglectful mother's out chasing sugar daddies. Or you can go and have a nice evening with Dave. I bumped into him yesterday. He does seem like a nice guy. Uh, just do it. Hey. What are you doing tonight? Uh, nothing. Please remember to lock up this time. The back door was left wide open last week. Whatever. You know, you shouldn't speak to me like that. You know, I'm in charge while Daddy's away. Or well, act like it. Oh, sorry. Acting's not your strong suit. <laughs> I'll get you, you stupid bitch. Walk me back. Oh, babe, I'm chilling with my mates. Fine. Maybe round later for some hanky panky though. Don't bother. <laughs> Bless. So we could go for a walk down at the front or Yeah. Okay. I'm off home. Is Ben's not walking you back? Nope. He's drinking with the guys. Home alone tonight, then? Looks likely. We can walk back with you, if you want. No, no. I wouldn't want to intrude on your romantic date. Laters. So, what do you want to do? Okay. Why move to this small little town? I need to get away from things. Fancy a change. Things? Just the hustle and bustle of the city. So, nothing to do with the girl then? No, nothing like that. Just, you've been here six months and you've already got Paula chasing after you. <laughs> I do not like Paula. <laughs> She's kind of horrendous. <laughs> I like you. Why? Um, quirky, interested. That's a compliment. <laughs> it was supposed to be. I like you too.
What's going on? You looked at that building and freaked out. My dad worked there. Okay. He found out some secret about the lab. And I think they killed him because of it. Oh, Emily. Why have I just heard about this? They covered it up. Who's they? The police. The company you work for. I, I don't know. You said about that, that weird guy the other day. He knew your dad. His name is Dr Ray. He and my dad and this other guy, who were scientists together at the lab. Keith's murder is bringing back all these old, old memories. Something told me I needed to look into it. And that's when I found this old picture of my dad and Dr A and this other guy, Dr Lloyd. Where's Dr Lloyd now? He told me he's dead. Then he wouldn't talk to me about it. Then I noticed he had some of my dad's old tapes. And the knife. Emily, you've got to stay away from the allotment. I'm serious. You need to stay away from it. If he turns up at the pub, which I doubt he will, just tell me the guys and we'll sort him out. Okay, thanks. Do you want me to walk you home? Yeah, okay. Come on then. Thanks for walking me back. I had a nice night. Me too. Hey, yeah, had a good night. I'll see you soon. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Bye. See you tomorrow. Continuing our Halloween season, we bring you Mario Fucino's acclaimed horror, Striptease Massacre. Such a fucking arsehole! Oh, hey babe, what's up? <laughs> you, uh, got any beers? You don't need any friggin' beer. Oh. Such an arsehole. I've got a surprise for you though, babe. What? Stand up, close your eyes. This is stupid. Babes, hush. Okay, open your eyes. <laughs> See? Can be romantic too. So, uh, forgiven for scaring you? Yes. So, beer? Yes, beer. You go in and get prepared. I'll go and raid the fridge. Mittens. Babe, I want sex. Oh, I'll settle for head. What the fuck? And I love another murder by the looks of it.
Oh, I love comics. Milky, you are the most incompetent. Kincaid? So, Emily, tell me what happened to your father. Emily. Are they dead? I'm afraid so. So, your date with Emily went well then? <gasps> Billy? Sorry, Dave, this is Billy, Millie's dad. Yeah, you are? There is no time for pleasantries. Millie told me to come and tell you all. Tell us what? There's been another murder. What? Who? It's Banson Claudine. I'm very sorry. Oh, shit. This is terrible. I'm gonna have to do a double shift. So, I need a word. Kincaid, can't you see I'm busy? Yes, but there's been another murder. I know. Do you? Of course. I'm the Chief Inspector. <laughs> right. Well, I've been piecing a few things together, and do you remember Tim Trescott's disappearance ten years ago? Uh, rings a bell. And do you remember the story his daughter Emily told us? About him getting murdered? Well, Keith, the fisherman who was murdered, worked with him years ago as a cleaner. And he was a suspect in a murder of another Dexter Corp employee. And then these two kids that died last night, they're friends with Emily, Tim's daughter. And she turned up at the crime scene. Look, Kincaid, I know you used to work in the big city, but around here, everyone knows everyone. You've been ten years on this beat. I would expect you to know that by now. Anyway, it was decided that Tim Trescott ran away. And his daughter made up the rest. The case is closed. Just a sad child with an overactive imagination. And the Dr Lloyd incident. I investigated that. It was a tragic accident. He was stabbed with a broken mop handle. You really need to drop this case. But, sir, that's completely unreasonable. I'm the detective on this case. So, investigate the recent incidents, then. Drop the Trescott stuff. Otherwise, you won't be the detective on this case. Emily! Go away! Oh, Emily, God. I heard what happened. Are you OK? You can't be here, Dave. What are you talking about? Look, you're clearly upset. Just let me in. You should be home alone. Don't you see what's happening? First my dad, now Bans and Claudine. Everyone I get close to ends up dead. Emily, you're talking nonsense. Just let me in, please. Emily, let me in! For fuck's sake, Emily! They're my friends too. It's been some time since my last update. I need to keep better records of what is happening here. The last three weeks have provided us with a fair amount of data, but nothing conclusive. The atmosphere here is hostile, to say the least. <sighs> Rumours are doing the rounds that Dexter Corp plan to remove all funding for the project unless they see some more control over the subject soon. A number of us expressed our concerns about how these tests are being run. Dr. Lloyd has unfortunately been removed from Project Scott's Relic. The team have decided that some of his tests have been creating some shall we say, less than desirable results. No, what am I saying? A downright dangerous result. Test subject 11B has been terminated. Dad? Is that 
about you. I'm not your father, I believe, but I knew him. I worked with him at the lab, Emily, and they killed me, Emily. To Lloyd? Who killed you? They gave me the fisherman to do it. That's why he is dead now, Emily. Emily. Dave! Here you go. I need to go talk to him. This phrase keeps coming up. Scott's relic. He was involved somehow with my dad. Who? Oh, please don't tell me you mean that old drunk. He wasn't always a drunk. He was a scientist. A ghost told me. A ghost, Emily? <laughs> You're not thinking straight. Our friends are dead. This has nothing to do with your abandonment issues with your father. This... <sighs> Emily, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking hell. I need to talk to you. People are dying and I, and I need answers. Dr. Lloyd told me to come and talk to you. Stupid, I know. Talking to a dead man. What exactly is Dexter Court rolling all of this? Hello? Hello? Are you okay? Oi, where are you going? Uh, to the pub. There's a murder investigation going on. That's why you're here, Kincaid. Do you really need to go to the pub right now? Absolutely. Have you seen the barmaid in there? She's a right tasty piece. People are being murdered. It's Halloween. Nothing bad ever happens on Halloween. Have some fun. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. Afternoon. Maybe. I can't believe Bats is dead. Yeah. It is pretty shit. Maybe we ought to do like a toast or something. To Bantz. He was an arsehole, but he was our arsehole. To Bantz. She's just trying to steal the thunder from us bobbies after solving the bike theft. Exactly. Anyway. Shall we go to the pub? Yeah. The Grange? Yeah, the sun is there. It's like a pub. He's been murdered. They got him. Sorry, who got what? Someone else has been killed. It's something to do with this Project Scoss relic. I know it is. Right, uh... Kincaid's in there, cos... Don't care. Fucking mental, that one. Emily, are you okay? There's been another murder. She's hysterical. I think she's losing it. Can't blame her, I guess. Who's hysterical? Emily. You think Spanson called his death has something to do with her father walking out knowing when she was younger? Which doesn't make any sense. She started talking about the old allotment man and saying some weird phrase. What phrase? Scoz relic. That literally doesn't mean anything. It, it, it's not even words. Scuzz relic. Scuzz relic. Whatever. Whatever. Hey. 
Thanks. Rest stop, Emily. My office is right over there. I've sent some officers over to the allotments. Thanks, Kincaid. Uh... Idiot. So what are you doing later? Oh, you know that other girl that works here? The one you hate? I don't hate her. She's just a bitch and a slut and I want her to die. Why? What's she done now? But it's something weird. In the station earlier, screaming bloody murder about... Well, a bloody murder. Another one? Oh, oh yeah. This is obviously all hush-hush, right? Of course. Tell me more. Don't know who she found dead. She just kept shouting these weird words. Scott's relic. She probably didn't find anyone dead. She's insane. Leave it all along. But later on, if you're not busy when this place closes. Meet me by the beach. Midnight. Bring friends. Bring wine. Not the cheap stuff. Loser. Well, at least I've got a backup plan. The Bents and Claudine. For fuck's sake, man. Do you have to say that every time? That's like the 15th shot. Okay, okay. I've got a new plan. We have like one or ten more of these. And then we go back to mine and watch the decorator. What? What? Oh, come on. It's not like the beach is happening anymore, is it? <laughs> I mean, half the original party aren't exactly up for it anymore, are they? What's wrong with you? Oh, come on, it's Halloween. It's just a bit of, you know, gallows humour. Your mates have just been brutally hacked up just last night. Does that mean nothing to you? Dave, Dave, man, come on, let, let go of me. You're hurting me, man. <sighs> Ow. I wasn't even that close to him. Jesus. Shot. Wow. I thought you were going to punch him. Dave, I'm going to head off. I'll see you at home when you've calmed down. <sighs> Glad that thunderstorm's cleared for now. Who wants to meet on a beach at fucking midnight anyway? The talent will be here in... Jesus, six hours. Go get that wine out of your car. Okay. F fucking sand gets everywhere. Ah, I'll be back well late. Gotta get in the neck for my wife. Oh, for fuck's sake. He looks so hot standing up to Jeremy over Claudine and Vance. I love that girl like his sister. I just get so angry, you know? How angry? Things wind me up so much, I just want to lash out and hurt someone. Have you ever done anything about it? I mean, have you ever hurt anybody? No, no. I've never even got into a fight. Off out or something? I'm just going to tell Emily something. I can watch over Emily. Why don't you get off now? 
I'm fine, sir. Honestly. You work too hard, Kincaid. Why don't you take a page out of your partner's book? Anyway, I've already sent everybody else home. But sir, I've had a breakthrough. What kind of breakthrough? You've still got this old thing. Well, yes. You gave it to me after five years of service. The old chief gave me this. I always hoped that one day you'd do my job. But there's a certain order in this town. You knew, didn't you? I'm sorry that it's come to this. How much did they pay you? Enough. Kincaid? I sent her home for the evening. I'll watch over you. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. You know, I need to close the bar. It's getting pretty late and you are my only customer. Well, I haven't finished drinking, so... Why don't we get some drinks and go back to yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an idea, good. I was just going to see Jamie anyways. Say sorry. It's probably all lonely. I forgot you lived with him. Her answer... Her answer was a horror film imported. Yeah? What's that about? A uh, horror film about... a carpenter or a house painter. The decorator? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. He wants to watch your Halloween. But his band over here? Yeah, it's his band. Let's do some more shots. Yeah. No. I thought we were going. Oh, a few more won't hurt. Unless you remember about tonight, the better. Sorry, my love. You can't go in there. Secret police work. You understand. Sorry. I'll go... I'll go and get a coffee. Yeah. Fine. I'll do it myself. Come on. Let's go. Bop, bop. Can we get chips? <laughs> Every 10 or 15 years, a film is produced that is so overwhelming, so forceful in its impact, that it becomes deeply embedded in the mind. Its intensity may be more than some wish to be exposed to, and those people should be forewarned.
so, what's going on with Chad? Uh, Chad's a jerk. What do you do this time? He ran off with Courtney. What a jerk. Such a jerk. But I love him and I'll marry him someday. <laughs> anyway, no way. Here about <gasps> murders. Oh, those young women who were murdered by the decorator? Yeah, I heard he painted the walls in their blood. Ugh, gross. Oh, so gross. Oh my god, look at the time. Sorry, you need to go. Oh, why is that? We have my decorator coming. Oh. Why okay. wouldn't she tell us about this? Come in. Can I get your coffee on the <laughs> Trick or treat. Here you go. Gee whiz, thanks, mister. <sighs> Little shits. Oh! Dave! You arsehole! You live in a basement. Huh? Uh. So, what color are you thinking? I think we should go back upstairs. No <laughs> oh, shit, here, take that. Red? Okay, I can So, did you come to see your big Hollywood debut? Fucking tell anyone, I'll fucking kill you. I came here to fuck Dave. How was I supposed to know he couldn't handle 32 shots? Wait, wait. <clears throat> Maybe, you know, you and I could, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw your tits already anyway. <sighs> Just you and me tonight then, buddy. <sighs> Milky! Better have bought some good wine, or I won't let you penetrate me tonight. I knew your father. Did you? Well, I had dealings with Dexter Corp. Who were you on the phone to just now? You remind me so much of him. Causing trouble for us. Affecting this town's bottom line. I, I don't understand. At one time, half the town were on their payroll. I was sent out to cover up the mess after they sent young Keith to kill Dr. Lloyd. But then they left, when everything nearly came out, because of your father. But there's still a few of us who remain to protect their interests. I think I'd like to leave now, please. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> this film is so fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Can you please try not to die? I'm trying to watch this film. Yeah. What? What? Do you want a drink or something? <coughs> that is gross. You you are so gross. If anyone's gonna operate about girlfriend. There's no sweets left. I said there's no fucking sweets left. Go home. I'm chest. <coughs> Kids never fucking listen to anyone. Can't you kids there? There aren't any sweets. Dave, did you break that fucking film? Dave? Oh, I can't see a fucking thing down here. I've been sick a little bit. Ha <laughs> ha 
hidden some items in the basement of the lab. In case... In case things go bad. I can no longer be a part of this project. There's been a cost to human life. And the security at this facility is no longer able to keep the test subject secure. And I suspect that my wife is complicit in the General's plans. And I fear for my daughter's safety. I need him answers. I know we were experimenting on animals and the subjects were able to take them over. But I had no idea they were able to do the same with humans. I think the general could have been taken over by one of these creatures. They seem to attach themselves to the foot of the host. Beasts. The beasts, Colin. They take others too. Which, which is why I named this project. Scott's relic. Or, when reversed. Killer socks. Killer socks. Killer socks.
<laughs> Congratulations, Emily. You managed to kill a puppet. Would you like to meet the thing that pulled its strings? your own father? <laughs> Since that night I've been hunting these things, but I didn't realize they were still such a presence in this town. I'm sorry, Emily. I thought by keeping away I'd keep you safe, but I was wrong. What happened to you? You look so different. Being stabbed 72 times and a decade on the road hunting monsters, it, it changes a man, Emily. But I assure you, I am Tim. I am your father. But... They're here. There's more of them? Of course. They always come in pairs. We gotta get out of here. Ah. I'm gonna hold you back. I can't walk by myself. You wait here, Emily. I'm gonna check if the coast is clear. Come on, Emily. There's more coming. Sorry for bringing this upon you, Emily. Who are they? Oh, they would have been people. But now, just tools for the socks. Baby, come to your mother. Mum! Mother loves you, Emily. Come to mother. That's not her, Emily. That's the thing that killed her. I know. I can't remember the last time she told me she loved me. <laughs> There's so many of them. Think this is a lot? You ain't seen nothing. None of this makes any sense. No? You ever wonder why you lose so many odd socks? My God. Emily, I've met God. And even she couldn't prepare you for what's about to happen. You ready for this? Dad, 
I've been waiting my whole life for this. Okay, you motherfucking suck cunts! Who wants some? Say